We actually closed down the first rendezvous probably like a month, two months ago. Yeah, probably about two months at this time, at this point, yeah. Yeah, if you uh, haven't noticed, haven't been vlogging a whole lot, we shut it down and we've been doing some of our own adventures, which we'll talk about later. But right now, we're talking about the first rendezvous and the sad story of killing it off. Well, actually, towards the end of it, it transformed from the first rendezvous, and for about the last month, it was date kits, and then it was nothing. Yeah, so it was the first rendezvous, then we decided to change the name to date kits, then we were like, all right, we wanna do bigger things with this, so we changed to kit company, yeah, and then <laughs> it was probably about a kick company for like a week, and then it ended. Yep, we just cut it off. We ran a Kickstarter campaign that we pushed out all over the internet, and our goal was to raise $2,500. Yes, that was the total, yep. And we made a deal and said, if we can raise this amount of money, and people are interested enough to fund us at that level, we'll keep it going. And it wasn't even close to that. Nope. People Not at all. obviously didn't want our product as much as we thought they were going to want it. And just for a little perspective, Drake and I created this almost two years ago now. Yep. It was the summer after I graduated from Walsh, and it was the summer going into your senior yep. year oh, at OU. Probably, yeah. We were sitting on my back porch and said we want to start a company, and we tried to figure out a way to make dating more exciting. Figured we both had problems with dating, so still do even after running a dating company. But we figured we'd try to find a way to make it a little bit easier and fun and engaging. And we did. I think we were successful at that. Yeah, we definitely did get some good reviews from people that used it. They had a blast. I've used it. It was super fun. My day enjoyed it. Yeah, it was definitely a side hustle because we picked it up and we had extra time and we didn't. We just left it there and did whatever else. However, that is kind of the story slash timeline of the first rendezvous slash date kits slash kit company, <laughs> whatever. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of the things we learned from the experience because like Drake said, we made a successful product. We actually had an LLC. We filed with the government. We learned a ton of stuff and that's sweet. So we're going to talk about that and the cool experiences that we had along the way. I mean, I was an entrepreneurship major in college, and let's say I learned more with the first rendezvous than I probably did with that major. We really did all of the pieces of this business. We formed it the official correct way by government standards. We went out, we talked to different suppliers, we tried to make deals, get the best products for our kits, for our boxes, and then after working with suppliers, we created different strategies for marketing. We did a live video slash show thing. We did a whole lot of stuff around this company through the year and the half that we ran it, and we definitely learned a lot from that. And uh, if you haven't gathered, you can go back. I've kept all of our Date Me shows still live on the internet. You can find those, and one huge thing is this guy's camera presence. Yeah, I'm, I'm beautiful on camera. They say the camera has 10 pounds, but they don't talk about how great it makes me look. Yep. No mentor, no one helping us, guiding us along the way. It was just us. Yeah, finances suck. Have yeah. somebody else do them. Yeah, it's not fun. I'm glad Especially you when did. you miss deadlines and they try to charge you $2,000 <laughs> penalties. Yeah, that happens. Stuff. It, it's not fun. It did happen. It that did, did happen. It literally happened to us. But we're good. With that, you said something about a mentor. And for all of you aspiring entrepreneurs out there, there is one thing that I would recommend. First, go out there, do all this stuff yourself. Try to figure it out. Read textbooks, go online, read blogs, do all that kind of cool stuff so you can learn the ways of doing it. Trial by fire. Send out some marketing campaign materials and see if people actually like it. Build a website, does it get engagement, figure out an ad strategy, all that kind of stuff. However, if you can pull a mentor on at any point in time, the earlier the better. Do it. Do it. I agree 100%. That was another thing that we could have done differently and that would have helped us potentially succeed. Let me give you an analogy really fast. So if you start a business without a mentor, it's like you're walking in the desert where the sun is just blaring into your eyes and you can't see, you have to squint. You can definitely make your way around, like you're not gonna run into a cactus or anything hopefully, but 
<laughs> when you get a mentor, it's like getting sunglasses, really cool ones like Ray-Bans or something. You can put them on and then you can actually open your eyes and you can see the direction that you're supposed to go. Yeah. One final thing that we are gonna talk about and leave you with is a piece for all of you aspiring entrepreneurs out there because we've done it. So now we can give you some of the nuggets from our experience so you guys can do it better than we can, hopefully. In the middle of a live interview, this kid just gets on ESPN. Frickin' Columbus crew might be getting rid of Ola Kamara. All right, we're gonna each give you two nuggets from our experience. I'm giving two, he's giving two, I'm starting off. I would like to tell you about one thing in marketing is have social media. Social media is one great way and an inexpensive way to start getting the word out about your products. So create cool social media pages, make sure you have all your information on there, have that website tagged along as well. Create cool and fun, interesting content that you can push out to people, directly reach out to individuals and say, hey, we're doing something kind of similar. Let's like chat, let's do a collaboration and retweet, reach out to the followers that you do have, make social media a part of your marketing plan. It gets very difficult to stay focused because you're responsible for your own actions. You have to take the responsibility, you have to take the action, you got to build what you want to build. Um, and it's hard to stay focused on that goal at all times. Do simple things like setting your own work schedule where you have to be somewhere at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. in the morning and get to work on your project. That was helpful. Little things like that make the biggest difference. Um, when we first started, we didn't have anything like that. And I lost concentration a lot and didn't work on the business when I should have been working on it. Then we set some regulations where we had to be at work or I had to run sprints if I wasn't at work on time. And that really helped me. I was not late to work a single day after that. That's true. I made it to work every day. We were there working full work days by ourselves. No one telling us that we had to do that. Use video. With all of the content that you're creating, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a professional. Just hop on Facebook Live. Talk about a cool product that you're about to start selling or bring on one of your customers that had a really good experience and just do a small mini interview and then post that on your social media. Whatever you do, you definitely need to get into video content because on social media and websites, you get rewarded on search by having video content. We got so much engagement, so many people telling us that they loved our videos. Okay, my other tip is just stay organized and know what you need to do. Um, but like building an inventory management system for our product. Um, that really helped. Not that we were selling a lot, but I had it there. I could go in and look at it all the time and see exactly what we had and know what we needed to do. We need to tell you one last thing, and that is there are a variety and a multitude of haters out there on entrepreneurs for some absurd reason. If we think about it, entrepreneurs are taking a massive and terrifying step. They're stepping away from the normal society that people say, all right, you go to school, you graduate, you get a job, you make money, you have a family, then you die. That's a bunch of crap. Entrepreneurs say it's a bunch of crap, so they're pushing that out and they're starting something new and creating an entirely new lifestyle for themselves, and that is terrifying. People out there, for some reason, hate on the people that are doing that. I don't know if it's because people are jealous that they're not out there and they don't have the guts themselves to go out and do it, or if they just really think that you were stupid for trying to start a business, but for some reason they just hate on you. They, yeah. People hate on you as an entrepreneur. It's so real. So be prepared for that hate to be thrown your way. However, don't let that discourage you. So you just have to keep fighting through, making those shifts, and not listening to what those crappy people that are jealous of your lifestyle have to say. Just keep going and keep doing what you want to do because that's how you're going to end up being successful. And you like milk, right? I love milk. I'm lactose intolerant, but I also <laughs> like dairy products. But if you think about it, who was the first person to milk a cow and taste it? That's a weird question. Right. I don't want to know. Exactly. I don't know what that dude was doing. So that dude was probably ridiculed by almost the entire world or community or cavemen group, whenever that occurred. But now almost all of our food is made with dairy. Yeah, that's actually wild to think of. Yeah. And that dude was probably, yeah, like I said, a weirdo. Everyone probably hated on him. If he was still around today, though, he'd be laughing at everyone else. That's what I'm saying. Now, everybody loves milk. So be like that random guy that decided to touch a cow inappropriately and taste the stuff that came out because they changed the world, and you can do the same, too. You can. Just don't touch things inappropriately. It's probably not the best. Yeah, especially in today's climate. Stay tuned 
for more vlogs that'll be coming in your way in the near future. I'm gonna go make dinner. Ah!